Hello, my name is Erik Heijmans and in the next few minutes I will give you a nice example of a co-creation process for sustainability, in this case in water quality management and landscape management in one of the Amsterdam canals, the Water Lily Canal. I will also raise a few questions and dilemmas that are part and parcel of a co-creation process and yielded valuable insights for other and future co-creation processes. I'm walking here along the Water Lily Canal in the GWL neighborhood. This is the first ecological urban neighborhood in Amsterdam. It was created here 15 years ago on a former terrain of the municipal drinking water supply company. The GWL, its abbreviation, is how this neighborhood is called. The neighborhood has several specific sustainability features integrated in the design of the buildings, the landscape and the water management design. The 1600 people living here have a history of designing and managing their own living environment. They know well how to manage and negotiate their wishes and ideas with various authorities. This canal was designed to collect rainwater. The reeds would treat it and the surplus water would then be discharged into a larger nearby stream. It was intended to be a natural and neat canal with clear, clear good quality water where one can find rest and peace and water lilies. In 2012 the GWL Association concluded that the canal was not well maintained, overgrown with common reed, and the water had become smelly and turbid. They questioned if the discharge and treatment idea functioned at all. The canal was also unattractive for people sitting at a nearby terrace at Café Amsterdam, which you see in the distance. And it was unclear who was really responsible for all this, and how it, the situation could be changed and addressed. Therefore, the GWL Association asked the Science Shop of Wageningen University to look into this and propose solutions. Three consecutive groups of MSc students almost literally dived into this issue. The original design aimed at having a current in the canal and a fountain to sustain a good water quality. The fountain originally disappeared for budget reasons and the current was not there either. The research showed that the quality of the water expressed in both chemical quality and biological quality was relatively well, but it was clear that the maintenance of the canal had been neglected, which resulted in a high concentration of organic matter. Primal, primarily reed remnants and reed roots, this created a muddy, smelly, coffee-like water. So how to solve these issues, and by whom? Removing the excess reeds and dredging the canal were the main activities to start with. The dredging being the responsibility of the local municipality and the city's water board, Waternet would be responsible for heightening the overflow. Surprisingly, the process was overtaken by reality, as in the week the students presented their recommendations, the dredging already took place. After the dredging, the quality of the water was increased by better reed maintenance. Root and reed cutting activities that will be done by the residents and the GWL will prevent wild growth. And recently they did so again, as you can see in the distance. By placing new shore plants, such as water lily, cattail, iris, swan flower and others in baskets, as in the shaping of floating gardens, as you see in front, both the biodiversity and the attractiveness was increased. These baskets also limit the spread of the reed roots. This asked some investment from GWL residents and Café Amsterdam, with the cooperation between the GWL Association, the local municipality West and Waternet that came about during the process, can be regarded as vital. So overall, this is a nice and straightforward illustration of co-creation. Nonetheless, during the presentation by the students, one of the residents present remarked, this is all very nice, but those living on the other side of the canal should stop throwing bread in the canal. Bread spillage in Amsterdam canals is a common problem. It is bad for the ducks and bad for the water quality. So the question rises, why were they not involved in this from the start too? Where does one stop being a stakeholder in the process of co-creation and how to ensure that? New initiatives have started in Amsterdam to collect all the bread and put it in fermenters to generate energy. Or wouldn't it be more sustainable to avoid bread getting old in the first place? <laughs>